Okay, then again, uh, happy to uh, be with you, even though I have not seen you. Uh, today, uh, we expect to deal with green human resource management. Very interesting topic. Also very uh, useful topic. So I sent you uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And also, uh, <clears throat> Okay, now I think, can you see the, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Right, okay. <clears throat> Green Human Resource Management. You can see the system objectives. After studying this uh, lecture, uh, successfully and then after studying the relevant material successfully and other things uh, <clears throat> you should be able to understand the meaning of green HRM the no four meanings of the term greening explain why green HRM is of very importance specify how to make HRM functions green ascertain green attitude green behavior green resource Employee green performance of job and green organizational performance. So these are the, so then there are five objectives which I expect from you uh, to achieve as far as uh, this uh, topic is concerned. First, uh, the meaning of green HRM. So indeed, uh, green HRM. Uh, it's a new uh, branch of human resource management. Uh, it still is an image, emerging uh, you know, uh, field, uh, not yet uh, developed fully. Uh, increasingly, research studies are being carried out, uh, are being carried out, and then hopefully, uh, within a very, not very, uh, within a reasonable time of future, we will be able to have a greater uh, amount of uh, body of knowledge of green human resource management. A search of the existing uh, limited literature reveals only a few definitions of green human resource management. So if you refer to uh, all the textbooks published uh, internationally, uh, you can't see a separate chapter on green human resource management. Only you can see uh, there are certain research papers about green human resource management. Except the, my book on uh, sustainable human resource management that has a separate chapter on green human resource management. Uh, so normally, so that's why, you know, uh, the, 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 the existing a literature is indeed very limited about green human resource management. Only a few definitions we can find. So then first definition I have mentioned here, given by uh, Jabba, Santos, and Nagona in uh, 2010. So according to them, uh, green human resource management is the greening of functional dimensions of a child, such as job description and analysis, recruitment, selection, training, perform and appraisal and uh, rewards. So functional dimensions. So normally uh, uh, functions, functions of HR. So we have to uh, make functions of HR in green. So that is uh, green HR. So when all the HR functions or at least a considerable number of HR functions have been made green, and then we can say that uh, there is green human resource management. 
then my second definition uh, that I have selected for you, uh, given by uh, Professor Renvik, Redman, and Majur in 2013. So according to them, them green human resource management is the integration of integration, inclu you know, include inclusion, integration of corporate environmental management into a charge. So there is there is another field. There's another subject called corporate environmental management. Corporate environmental management. So when we integrate corporate environmental management into human resource management, uh, then uh, what we call the green human resource management gets started. So there is green human resource management when there is the integration of corporate environmental management into uh, HRA. So you can see my definition, green human resource management is referred to all the activities involved in uh, development, implementation, and ongoing maintenance of a system that aims at making employees of an organization green. So then uh, according to this definition, we have to develop a system. You know, the purpose of that system is to make all the employees of the organization green. So we need, uh, we don't need normal employees under green HRA. We do need uh, green employees. So therefore, we, uh, we do certain uh, activities, so which are associated with uh, developing a system of aiming at making employees of an organization green. Also activities involving implementing that system and also maintaining continuously that system which aims at making all the employees who are you know, normal employees. The normal employees will have to be transformed into green employees. Green employees. For that, we have to develop a system and then having developed that system, we have to implement it and then we have to maintain uh, forever until we do the business. Then second definition, uh, it is the side of HRM that is concerned with transforming normal employees into green employees so as to achieve environmental goals of the organization. And finally, to make a significant contribution to environmental sustainability. So then we have here something called environmental sustainability. So without environmental sustainability, we can't, you know, there is no survival of human beings. Also, there are no survival of non-human beings. Then, of course, there is no existence of organizations if there is no environmental sustainability. So the, uh, to have environmental sustainability is a very, very important necessity. So then we have to make a final significant contribution to environmental sustainability, which is of course positive significant contribution. So then in order to uh, have a final significant impact on environmental sustainability, we have to achieve environmental goals of the organization. Hopefully, you know, if you take an organization which is concerned with environmental sustainability, there must be goals relating to environment. Here the environment means the natural environment, not normally what we call is managerial environment. No, it's not that environment. This is natural environment. In simple, the nature. So we want to protect the nature. In order to protect the nature, the relevant ideal organization must have certain goals. So then in order to achieve such nature-related goals, we have to transform normal employees into green employees. Uh, that is the, you know, so, so green HRM is that side of HRM. Then further, uh, it refers to the policies, practices, and system. Of course, we do need policies, practices, and systems that make employees of the organization green. For the benefit of, you can see the individual, the society, natural environment, and the business. Okay, so about three definitions.
from my original article published in 2013. So it's also the subsequent publications done in 2014, uh, 2019. Yes, you can see the, all these three uh, definitions. So I hope my definitions are clear and I hope that uh, you can understand. Then green may have different meanings in different contexts. So before, we, okay, then uh, you know the, 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 the adjective for this uh, child here the green. So then green may have different meanings in different con contexts. Here the context is a child. So context is a child or managing people at work in an organization. So green involves in the nature or natural environment. Of course, then it is about the nature. It is about the nature. So normally, if you go to you know dictionary definitions, if you go to dictionary de definitions, you can find uh, certain dictionary definitions you know which have been mentioned in my uh, you know uh, one article, the first article that I sent you. Uh, so then, please uh, refer to them also. We want to save time. Right. So then. Uh, as far as uh, HRM is concerned, there are at least four meanings of the term green or green. The first meaning, that is preservation of the natural environment. The preservation, preservation of the natural environment. So the preservation means safeguarding or keeping safely. So you know the natural environment is the nature. Uh, that's the natural world. So that world, you know, the, uh, that world is not the world, you know, created by the human beings. So they're not, not man-made, you know, the nature is not man-made. So it is, it is natural. Maybe the God has created according to some uh, religions. But anyhow, this nature is definitely, is not something which was created by the human beings. So it includes all the things which are not made or constructed by us, by us. So they include, you know, uh, lands, forests, plants, animals, and other non-artificial things, non-artificial phenomena. So then the flora and fauna of Sri Lanka, you know, the plants and the animals. So the flora means the plants, then the fauna means uh, the animals. So especially living and growing in our Sri Lanka, which is our motherland, so come under the natural environment. So preservation of the natural environment means keeping it in its original form, without touching it, without using it, without you know making it uh, reduced, making it consumed. So that's the meaning of uh, preservation. So under preservation, we don't use the nature. We, we let the nature be as it is. We let, let the nature be as it is without using the nature. Uh, that is uh, under the first meaning of greening, that is uh, preservation. Then we have conservation of the natural environment. Conservation, of course, you know, uh, humans have various needs that you know. So many needs, you know, we have so many needs. Of course, you and me may get uh, changed uh, by the amount of various needs. But anyway, you and me may be different, uh, different parts of human beings. But anyway, normally you can see uh, many uh, peoples in the world, they are very uh, greedy and then they have enormous, you know, uh, so various uh, needs. So then until they die, they want to, even after death also, there are many needs that they want to uh, fulfill. So therefore, willingly or, willingly or unwillingly, you know, we are compelled to use certain parts of the nature, certain parts of the nature. So therefore, there is, I mean, there is a need of using the nature in order to meet various needs of human beings. So in order to achieve various needs of human beings, we do need various goods and services, which are produced by, which are produced by various organizations. To produce 
uh, such goods and services to make uh, to, i mean to fulfill various needs of human beings these organizations will have to use certain certain things certain inputs from the nature from the nature let us take a personal example relating to you right so one day you want to develop your own home you want to develop your own home so then there is a land for that there's a land for that in the land assume there are 10 coconut trees 10 coconut trees so with the 10 coconut trees you can develop your home so in order to develop your home on that land you have to cut those 10 coconut trees assume at least eight coconut trees will have to be cut in order to develop your home on that land are you willingly or unwilling assume you don't like to cut but anyway uh, priority wise home is more important more important and then you will have to decide uh, cutting those uh, 10 or 8 coconut trees uh, that is an example showing uh, the need of utilizing the nature then uh, right you can see uh, <clears throat> so this one uh, leaves of herbs are used to prepare medicine to cure diseases of people you know, we have many diseases, many people are suffering from many diseases. Then in order to cure, you know, we need uh, certain uh, medicines, which will have to be produced by using leaves of herbs. So which are parts of the nature, which are parts of the nature. Then wood, coal and oil, you know, from the nature, we have to burn, burn in order to provide heat, power, you know, light. So the right. So then, then what do you mean by the conservation of the natural environment? So it is to be very careful in the way of using the nature for the purpose of allowing it to last as long as possible. To use the nature in order to, you know, you know, in order to leave it, in order to save it, so that you know, uh, future generations, future people will be able to use it. So you have children, then children will have children, so they will have children. So likewise, you know, future, you know, we'll have so many human beings uh, which, which are to be born, which are to be born. So for them, for their consumption, we have to save the, the current amounts of the land, current amounts of trees, various things of the nature. So then the conservation of the natural environment means to, uh, means to save. You know, we have to use the nature in the way that will save, that will save for our future generations, that will save the nature for our uh, future uh, generation. Maybe assume uh, there is 100 percent, I mean, uh, the, 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 the lands, you know, so assume we got 100, then uh, we do need assume uh, 50. But we can reduce that up to uh, 35. Then we will use only 35. The rest we will save for the future generations. Otherwise, they will curse us. They will not respect ancestors. Okay, then the third meaning of uh, greening that is avoidance of min or minimization of environmental pollution, environmental pollution. So environmental pollution means contaminating the planet, contaminating the natural environment by using various, you know, various substances, various things. So it is dirtying and poisoning the nature. So indeed environmental pollution, the human beings cause because of their various activities. It is the result of the inadequate works of human beings, inappropriate, sorry, inappropriate, wrong works of human beings. So then the avoidance of environmental pollution is to stop contaminating the water. So we have to stop the water pollution. 
or we have to minimize if we can't stop polluting the water, polluting the air, polluting the atmosphere. Right. So ideally, we have to avoid. If we can't avoid, uh, then we have to minimize. We have to minimize uh, the pollution, contaminating uh, various aspects of the nature, such as water, air, atmosphere. Right. Then uh, fourth meaning of greening, generation of gardens and looking like natural places. Generation of, well, we have to create gardens. Gardens are man-made. So they are not natural things. So we, we create gardens and then looking like natural places like parks. Okay, so then uh, Right, the relevant source is this one. Then uh, this, uh, right, it's another expansion of the original article. Okay, right. So now the characteristics of green human resource management. So you can see green HRM focuses on making employees green. So it is the environmental side of HRM. So then if there is something called environmental aspects of HRA, uh, that is green HRA. That, that, that's a recent development. That's a recent development. So normally HRM did not have uh, such an aspect called environmental aspect. But now HRM got expanded uh, into various uh, areas, new areas. So one new area is this uh, greening. Greening. So there is a new field of HRM. It has environment aspects of managing people at work. So it's mainly concerned with human dealings with the nature, the natural environment, within an organization context, even within the employees' individual context also we can, you know, we can use green HR, but mainly within an organizational context, the human dealings with the natural environment will get the concern, main concern of green HR. Then we have the policies, you know, it has policies, procedures and practices influencing on greening of employees, greening of employees. So basically green HR schemes will have to be developed if we apply green HR to our organization. Then the schemes include policies, procedures, various practices, budgets, Right, then what is the purpose of green HR? So it's very clear, nicely stated, to create, enhance, and retain greening within each employee of the organization so that he or she gives a maximum individual contribution on each of the four roles. So now we got here the four roles, preservationist, conservationist, non-polluter, and maker. Preservation is role derives from the first meaning of greening, that is preservation of the natural environment. Then conservation is derives from the second meaning of greening, that is conservation of the natural environment. Non-polluter, non-polluter, that is the th third role that green employee has to play. Non-polluter, that derives from the Third meaning of greening, that is avoidance or minimization of environmental pollution. Then the fourth role is maker, that derives from the fourth meaning of greening, that is generous generation. Uh, or not generate, yes, generation or generating, generating of gardens and looking like natural places. Looking like natural places. So the <clears throat> Okay, you go to this uh, article, you can see here, uh, figure, you know, draw your attention to figure. Right, 
uh, figure one. <clears throat> so you can see uh, four uh, contextual meanings of the term green or greening. So here we have green or greening. So then conservation of the natural environment. Uh, that is the second meaning. With the preservation, that's the first meaning. And avoidance or minimization of environmental pollution, that's the third meaning. Then generation of gardens and looking like natural places. Okay, so it's clear. So then based on this, you know, it is possible to argue that every employee, uh, the employee may be a manager, employee may be a non-manager, top manager, it doesn't matter. So what matters here is every normal employee has to become a green employee who has to, or who is required to perform, who, who, who is required to contribute the four meanings of green. Why? Why? Why uh, playing? The four roles, four subsequent roles. Okay, here, draw your attention to figure two. So that shows the four roles of a green employee preservationist, conservationist, non polluter, and the maker. Okay, then uh, these four you know, specific roles, I have utilized one generic term uh, that is nature lover or eco-activist, nature lover or eco-activist. That's not the ecologist, you know, there's, there's another term, there's another name, ecologist. So who is an ecologist? Ecolo an ecologist is a scientist who does research about plants, trees, grass, and all these things, you know, uh, balancing the balance among various you know, natural parts of the nature. So then an ecologist is a scientist. We don't expect, we don't expect that every employee you know, becomes an ecologist. There is no need for you if you are an employee. Uh, there's no need for me if I am an employee to be an ecologist. You know, uh, maybe <clears throat> in some government organizations relating to forest uh, conservation, preservation, we can see a uh, few employees who are working as ecologists, even in universities, uh, you know, you know, relevant in relevant uh, educational departments about uh, environmental management, forestry. So likewise, you know, there, there, there are, yes, we can see ecologists, scientists, who does research about the nature, about the ecological, you know, balance, balance. But anyway, we don't need uh, employees to become ecologists, but we do need all the employees, every employee to become a nature lover or eco-activist under green human resource management. So therefore, uh, future in future, you will be an employee when you enter the world of work. I hope uh, maybe few uh, students who are listening to me uh, may have already obtained some jobs, which may be temporary ones anyway, but they are working as employees. So then they are, they are expected if green HRM is being practiced in that organization, then you are expected to become a nature lover or eco-activist. An eco-activist is an employee who does the maximum contribution on the four roles, such as preservationist, conservationist, non-polluter, and maker, and maker. Okay, then. <clears throat> okay, you can see. Green employee is a nature lover or an eco activist. Now, what is the importance of green HR? Of course, if you are very intelligent or if you are intelligent averagely, you can understand if you got understood about the four meanings of greening, you know the importance, you feel, you can understand the importance of green HR. 
you know, the four roles, you know, will clearly show the importance of HRM. So if you do green HRM, then of course there will be a significant positive impact on preserving the natural environment, on conserving the natural environment, on minimizing, at least minimizing, if not uh, avoidance, at least minimizing uh, the pollution of the natural environment, and also doing expansions, doing additions in terms of gardens, in terms of parks to the natural environment. So if we, right, even uh, this one, you know, so if you generate gardens and looking like natural places, you know, they will contribute to beautifying the working places. That is byproduct of, you know, uh, this uh, role, generation of gardens and, you know, maker, the role is maker, then human enjoying and releasing human distress by watching and feeling the man constructed nature. Later, you know, certain parks, if you take a park, you know, uh, originally it is a man-made thing, man-constructed thing or woman-constructed thing. But later, you know, after several years, the nature will automatically uh, get started. You know, within that uh, park, which was constructed by the human being. So they ultimately, you know, join, join. So therefore, parks and the gardens definitely will get joined, combined with the nature when the time passes. Right. Then sustainable development and environmental sustainability. You know, we can't achieve unless the relevant employees are green seriously. Now you see Sri Lanka. You know, many years ago, Sri Lanka, you know, had many many lands you know uh, which got the nature trees many trees uh, forest you know the forest the, the 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 land area for forest was huge many years ago but now you know because of human activities you know because of greedy human activities uh, now sri lanka is losing her land amount uh, forest amount. Maybe I think the percentage, if I exactly I can't remember, but maybe uh, between 21 and 24 percentage now we have. You know, I assume, you know, many years ago we had 100%. Now, you know, left, you know, only uh, between 21 and 24. So if you reduce this amount also, what will happen to our nature? Sri Lanka will be a place, you know, without the nature, then terrible, you know, it will be terrible. So it is not an exaggeration to mention here that the employees are the key to success or failure of eco activities of an organization. So if you refer to my, to, you know, two articles and also maybe relevant articles, if you have the time, so you can see that, you know, uh, there are many failures of environmental management activities. Now, there are environmental laws. There are ISO 14001 regulations even in Sri Lanka, which are concerned with, you know, uh, avoidance or minimization of the environmental pollution. There are certain laws, so which, you know, will have to be adhered to by relevant organizations, relevant top managers. So these, you know, environmental management programs would fail mainly because of one reason, uh, that is, the employees were not seriously concerned with the successful implementation of uh, environmental management programs. You know, if, if employees are not seriously green, then it is hard to implement uh, environmental management program so as to achieve environmental goals of the organization. So whatever, you know, I guess so for, for you know, 14,001, all these, you know, the relevant schemes. We want to make them uh, successful, provided that if employees are serious about them, if employees are not that serious, then of course we can expect no success but the failure. 
okay for further you know further you can see uh, if you take an employee you know the employee has a private life also a work life so in the private life we can consider employee as a customer as a consumer in the official life of course the employee is an you know the person the employee is an employee the employee does a service for a certain employee for a certain employee so therefore the uh, environmental friendly behavior we can see in both life domains work life domain and also private life domain so therefore green hr is not only important at the organizational level at the employee level at the individual level personal life level also the green human resource management is beneficial okay this further you know further <clears throat> so we will save the time right so what do you mean by this it is possible to mention here that there is business case for green hr and also there is moral case for green hr business case you know? so there is business case uh, for green hr so what do you mean by that business case you 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 have learned about csr you know corporate social responsibility you know currently you know currently uh, employees you know, uh, employees they like to remain according to research employees like to employees like to stay within you know within organizations which are environmentally friendly so therefore if you use green hr so that will reduce employee turnout that will increase employee retention you know this functional employee turnover you know can get uh, reduced if we use uh, green hr because employees especially who are environmentally friendly or maybe from their education maybe from their informal you know months of education from tv from uh, peer groups from social groups responsibility group various social societies you know people uh, employees can become uh, seriously environmental friendly so if we if they see that their their organizations are also environmentally friendly then they like they have more willingness to retain within the organization also prospective candidate job candidate when they apply they, you know they have more tendency to apply uh, for uh, job vacancies of the organizations which are more environmentally friendly according to research study also customers customers you know uh, if customers are very serious about the environment by understanding that their survival depends on the survival of the nature then they want business organizations also uh, to contribute significantly to the protections of the nature enhancements of the nature then customers you know according to research studies customers become more loyal customers uh, you know decide to purchase more from organizations which are seriously green which are seriously environmentally friendly so therefore that's the meaning of you know business case so that means you know by you know uh, by being green by adoption you know through the adoption of green hr in the particular organization will be able to reduce the dysfunctional turnover will be able to increase customer loyalty will be able to increase uh, the amount of customer purchasing and finally then resulting in increasing the profits competitive advantage that's the business case for a uh, green hr the what is the second one the meaning of second one moral case there is moral case for green hr moral case for green hr what do you mean by this moral case you know if you take any business organization you know, that business organization gets the license to operate its, its business 
so as to do the pursuit of a fair profit, not an unfair profit. Now we expect a fair profit from an organization. So then that organization has no license given by the members of the society or the government to maximize profits by destroying the natural environment in which all creatures and people live. If business operations advertently or inadvertently do many harm, advertently, you know, purposefully, inadvertently, without the purpose, so uh, without knowledge, you know, so if business operations advertently or inadvertently do damages, harms to the, or any harm to the natural environment, that business organization becomes responsible for that. Hence, morally, a business organization is oblig obligated, that has an obligation, a serious obligation, to act as a responsible, green, corporate citizen. Now, that's the meaning of moral case for green charity. Okay, now uh, shall we move to another uh, section of this lecture? Making HRM functions green. Making HRM functions green. The first normally job design we consider as the first step, first function of HRM, according to general HRM. Job design. So you know the meaning. Many times you have learned job design. So the meaning, all these things must be. Uh, you know, must be within you because you are now in the final year specializing in HRM. So basically, under job design, you know, every organization has certain goals to be achieved. To achieve uh, those certain goals, the, every organization has a big work. Uh, that big work cannot be performed by one individual. So therefore, this big work is broken into certain jobs. So one job is consisting of uh, task duties and responsibilities to achieve a, so at least one objective, you know, which will lead to the attainment of uh, organizational goals. So then under job design, right, you know, how can we make that job design green to incorporate environment related tasks, duties and responsibilities in each job and put them into effect. So when we, you know, uh, a job is an organizational unit of work. So under job design, what we do is we arrange tasks, duties, and responsibilities into one particular job. One particular job, you know, which has a particular objective to achieve. So then when we when we arrange tasks, duties, and responsibilities, right, at least there is new task. Or we can say in simple, in simple, there is new duty. Uh, that is greeny. There is new responsibility, or that is greeny, with regard to each job. So these jobs, you know, are not green jobs. You know, what do you mean by green jobs? Uh, ecologist is an example of green jobs. Uh, forest officer is an example of green jobs. Environmental scientist is an example of green jobs. But I'm not. I'm not referring to here such jobs, such jobs. So if you take, right, uh, production assistant, salesman, curricular employee, management trainee, marketing manager, finance manager, human resource manager, top manager, even vice chancellor in the university, even a professor, you know, even chair professor like me. So then it doesn't matter, senior professor, chair professor, assistant professor, you know, what matters is, uh, in regarding, you know, every job, there's a component called environmental training. Uh, that is green. That is green. So therefore, uh, if you take the job of professor, there is a green part, green duty, green responsibility. If you job of uh, a surgeon in a hospital, there is a duty called green duty. Responsibility called green responsibility. So therefore, please understand that I'm not referring to green jobs, but I'm referring to all the jobs 
uh, which can you know be designed so as to have green duties and green responsibilities then to use a team of cross functional teams you know teamwork or uh, and cross functional teams as job design techniques to successfully manage the environmental issues of the organization so we can you know we can have <clears throat> yes uh, team working team working so i assume there are four, five five jobs now there is a collective you know collective duty for the five jobs uh, that collective duty is to uh, one day you know uh, get together maybe at least one day per month get together and discuss whether there are environmental issues if there are environmental issues then what to do what to do to you know face those environmental issues or that team has to decide okay then if you take job analysis to include environmental dimension as a duty in job description jd then to include green competency as a special component in uh, job specification green competencies green knowledge green skills a green in knowledge greening skills it's like new competencies we have to identify then we have to include them in the job specification or person specification that if you take human resource planning to engage in forecast in number of employees and types of employees needed to implement the environmental you know corporate environmental management programs if the organization has example iso 14001 clean production responsibility care there may be you know various programs which are corporate environmental management programs then to implement such programs what are the types of employees needed then under each type how many employees do we need are those things we have to decide under human resource plan if we do that then human resource planning the normal human resource planning function becomes green okay then to engage in deciding strategies to meet the forecast demand for environmental works appointing consultants experts to perform energy you know, or environmental audits so like okay then recruitment to include environmental criteria in the recruitment messages to communicate the employer's concern about greening through recruitment efforts so we can say we are environmentally friendly organization we are very serious about uh, preservation of the natural environment conservation of the natural environment minimization of the environmental pollution so like these things you know can be <clears throat> can be communicated through recruitment efforts which will get the attraction of customers buyers uh and you know customer not only uh job seekers not only recru recruitment advertisements are for job seekers but they may get attracted by the normal customers even job seekers may be customers may be consumers then selection and selection to select applicants who are sufficiently aware of greening to fill job vacancies to have, to select applicants who have been engaging in green as consumer under their private life domain then induction when you do you know introducing new employees to the organization general environment of the organization special environment of the organization when you do induction then we can do uh, making new employees familiar with greening efforts of the organization then to develop induction program you know, showing green citizenship behavior of current employees so i will later i will come to specific types of green behavior specific types of green behavior so later i will come so there is you know one type called uh, green uh, organizational citizenship behavior there is another type green interpersonal citizenship behavior 
Then there's another type, a green official behavior. So which I will discuss later. Then under training. So how to how to make training function green? To impart right knowledge and skills about greening to each employee through a training program exclusively designed for greening. So we can develop a green training program to give knowledge of greening, skills of greening, right attitude of greening. To apply job rotation to train uh, green managers of the future. To do training needs analysis to identify uh, training needs of employees, you know, with regard to greening, uh, greening training, you know, green training needs or training needs of greening. Then, of course, performance evaluation to evaluate employees' job performance according to the set of there are green related criteria. For example, uh, right, one, one target, for which is a green one, to reduce the electricity bill uh, from, assume from 100 to, uh, 100 to 90 within this year, within this year. Uh, that can be considered as a green target or green objective relating to certain departmental managers. Departmental manager. Uh, then, you know, uh, based on the degree of the achievement of that uh, green target, so we can, you know, evaluate. I mean, we can evaluate the, the environmental managers, sorry, the departmental manager's job performance in terms of the achievement of that green target. Whether the person has achieved to the fullest extent or to a moderate extent or to a low extent. Likewise, to include a separate component for progress on green. So normally after, uh, after doing performance evaluation, the results of the performance will have to be discussed with the real, relevant evaluators or the employees whose performance was evaluated. That's why we have to do a uh, performance feedback interview. So when we do performance feedback interview, we can have a separate section for the discussion of uh, greening, resource of greening, issues of greening, progress of greening. Right. Then under rewards management, we can give financial incentives to employees for their good green performance. We can introduce rewards for innovative environmental initiatives. You know, we can we can encourage people to develop various environmental you know, wait, you know, initiatives, programs, innovative programs like, you know, for, for, for reducing waste, for reducing electricity, for, for, for reducing water consumption, you know, new, new uh, initiatives. We can encourage employees to develop, propose. So then if there are good uh, proposals, then we can reward financial rewards and non-financial rewards. Yes, non-financial rewards such as places and recognitions to employees for their greening. When we can have, you know, the, empl the employee of greening, the department of greening, the section of greening, the business unit of greening, uh, such awards, you know, can be introduced in serious organizations, uh, in green human resource management, uh, not uh, unfortunately not in Sri Lanka. This is online uh, teaching, so I reserve my comments for the Sri Lankan practices. So the so there are you know some foreign uh, organizations which are very serious about green HR. I have read some cases, you know, surprisingly I understood that they are very serious about green HR and they are following many initiatives. Many things under green HR. Then discipline management. To formulate and publish rules of conduct relating to greening. So normally we, under discipline we have rules of conduct, rules of behavior. Now, you know, a separate section rules of green behavior, rules of green conduct. Then we can, you know, we can develop a progressive discipline system 
to punish employees who violate the rules of green conduct. So what is progressive disciplinary system? So you have learned that. So a progressive dis disciplinary system has, you know, so now, you know, has uh, the, the, the way of punishing for, for, for offenses which are repeated in a higher way, in a more serious way. Repeated offenses, you know, get uh, uh, more serious penalties, more serious penalties under a progressive disciplinary system. For the first violation, so we can give like uh, an oral warning. Then for second violation, we can give a written warning. Third violation, uh, we can give uh, yes, uh, we can yes, we can we can give a certain fine, certain fine. Then uh, at the fourth time of violating, then we can stop salary increment. So likewise, you know, uh, we can go until the most serious uh, punishment that is dismissal. Right. Then under health and safety management, we can create uh, various environmental related initiatives to reduce employee stress and occupational diseases. Then to formulate and implement a strategy like green factory, green zone, to maintain you know, an environment that is favorable for preventing various health problems of the employees. The labor relations, to provide opportunities to the trade union and its members to participate in greening. Because we have to, we have to, we have to transform normal trade union uh, members, trade union leaders including, including trade union leaders into uh, green uh, members, green trade union leaders. So to provide opportunities to participate in greening, introduce green whistle blowing and help lines. So what do you mean by whistle blowing? So assume there is an organization which does bad things, you know, into the uh, nature. For example, uh, sinking uh, various weights into the soil, into the uh, surface, the land, by destroying the natural, you know, ecological uh, balance, ecological balance inside inside the land, inside the uh, planet. Even uh, dirtying, you know, dirtying the, the nearby uh, wells, uh, water, the water of the wells nearby. You know, there are some uh, Sri Lankan cases also, actual Sri Lankan cases. So then, uh, if assume. You are an employee, so then your organization is behaving in that bad way. Then you can first, you know, you can first uh, draw the attention of a responsible top manager of the organization about this bad thing. If that responsible manager also doesn't care, then of course you can, you know, uh, give this uh, the information about this bad thing to the uh, police or to the <coughs> sorry, environmental authority, the government. That's the meaning of whistle blowing, green whistle blowing. There may be you know, some companies which may try to destroy the people you know, who give uh, information about uh, uh, bad things, uh, you know, being done by the organization to the natural environment. You know, so the, uh, there is a need of developing uh, legal provisions to protect you know, such employees. To provide training to the union representatives about environmental management. To recognize union as a key stakeholder for environmental management using partnership approach rather than by making the union separated you know, we have to invite the support of the union by using partnership approach we have to work with the union the management has to work with the union so that you know we have to recognize union 
as a key stakeholder for environmental management. Green HR. If the union people, you know, oppose green HR initiatives, then that is terrible. So we have to avoid such situation under green-oriented labor relations. Right. Okay, then. Uh, <clears throat> Now we have finished uh, the base, you know, certain base of making HR functions green. Any questions so far? Dear students, yes, if you have any questions, you can write. One can unmute and they respond. Hello. Yes. Any questions? No questions, sir. Thank you for your response. <clears throat> right. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Now, uh, shall we move to another section? Uh, green attitudes. Green attitudes. Okay. Generally, you know <clears throat> what is an attitude? You must have been taught by various uh, university teachers, including myself. So, if you take an attitude, you know, basically there are three components. One is cognitive component, second one is affective component, and third one is behavioral component. So what is cognitive? That is about believing or beliefs. What is affective? That is about feelings. Then what is behavioral? That is about intention to behave, intention to act towards green. So a green attitude involves then behaviors about greening, not behavior, beliefs, beliefs about greening, feelings uh, towards greening. So of course, beliefs, you know, you have to believe in greening. So if, I, if, I am, if, if I am focusing on your attitude, you know, whether your attitude you know, is green or whether you have a right uh, green attitude, uh, then uh, let me ask this question. Do you believe in greening? If you do believe, believe in greening, and then you have that cognitive part, which is right. Then how do you feel about greening? How do you feel about preservation of the natural environment, conservation of the natural environment, avoidance or minimization of environmental pollution? Do you feel interestingly? Do you feel positively? If you feel interestingly, if you feel positively, and then you have effective part which is right then intention of acting towards and then do you for example you know, after after finishing this lecture you will be able to get a good knowledge of green and then do you have an intention to be green actually related to your personal life you are still an undergraduate so then being an undergraduate you can make a significant contribution to green, it doesn't matter you are a graduate, you are an undergraduate, you are an employee, you are a non-employee, you are a manager, you are a non-manager, it doesn't matter. Every, every person can make, it is possible for every person to make a significant positive contribution to green if that person has certain right things including this one, right green attitude. 
right green attitude okay then an activity an activity you know you see the i believe in breathing so then that an activity yes let us uh okay then we have this one right let us go to activities uh, <clears throat> no not here the <clears throat> right okay, let me go to this one this uh, green uh, okay this one go to the end of the article there is an appendix if my memory is correct uh, yes here you got the appendix which is an illustration of right attitude which is an illustration of right attitude so in fact the, i developed that activity based on this so if you know if there is an employee who is having the right attitude and then what do you mean by that right attitude it is it is just like this illustration it is just like so what do i mean by the right attitude which is about greening uh, that is represented by this illustration so on the cognitive you know i believe in greening is very important for survival and sustainability of myself my organization my society my country and the earth it deals with protecting and saving the nature greening is one of the most important virtues you know virtues of what are virtues virtues are moral things which are favorable for you favorable for me favorable for others favorable for the nation favorable here for the nature so therefore greening can be considered considered as one of the most important virtues like honesty like benevolence like humility then i will be able to lead a very happy life by being green uh, these things you know, can be considered as beliefs examples of beliefs you know which reflect the right attitude in terms of cognitive part and then affective part i feel positively about the need of green i like to working in green i feel happy when i think and talk about green and then behavior i intention to become a serious contributor to green i will be in green i hope to live with green i am going to be a serious green employee you know the behavioral component of the attitude is not the actual behavior not the actual action but this behavioral aspect of the attitude you know most likely will lead to the actual behavior if you have a green behavioral component which will more likely to lead to green action green actual behavior according to research okay uh, right <clears throat> right then uh, <clears throat> uh, green attitude and then the next one is the green behavior next one is the green behavior right <clears throat> so you can see here my definition what is green behavior that's the extent to which you in case of you 
takes, uh, you know, you take actions in respect of being. So behavior in simple includes actions. Never forget that. Behavior includes actions. Attitude includes beliefs, feelings, and behavioral intentions. But the behavior includes actual actions. Actual activities done, actions you know, engage in. So therefore, uh, what's the extent to which a particular employee takes actions uh, relating to green, uh, that is green behavior. Uh, green <coughs> behavior includes green actions, so likewise. So there are two major types of green behavior. One is green personal behavior. The other one is green work behavior. So green personal behavior is relating to your personal life. But green work behavior is relating to work. Easy to understand. Under green work behavior, there are uh, sub three, uh, three subcategories. Green interpersonal efficiency behavior, green uh, organization efficiency behavior, and uh, green official behavior. Let us take first uh, green personal behavior. Right. What the employee does in relation to greening at his or her personal life comes under a green personal behavior. So it is defined as the extent to which the employee takes positive actions. We are not talking about negative actions. Negative actions are not supposed to be done. So positive actions in respect of greening at personal life. So what do you mean by in respect of greening? So at least four meanings. Please remember, when I use the term greening, those four meanings, at least, which I taught you at the outset. Preservation of the natural environment, conservation of the natural environment, avoidance or minimization of environmental pollution, and generating gardens or generation of gardens and looking like natural places. So when the employee is at home and at the other places, not at the workplace, right? the employee you know, in the personal life you know, can be at home, also at some other places which are not actually the workplace. He or she can engage in green personal being. Right. So that is one word, you know, in the limited uh, literature on green behavior. So that word is, that concept is called pro-environmental behaviors. So here the pro means favorable. Favorable, you know, uh, positive. Positive environmental actions are included, you know, under pro-environmental behaviors. You know? So as uh, given here, which encompasses all individual behaviors that contribute to environmental sustainability. And such behaviors are volitional. What is volitional? Voluntary. It's not compulsory, voluntary. Intentional. Because with an intention, which is serious, you do that. And entirely under the control of individuals. That means you can control your personal behavior. You don't need others to control. Now under, okay, environmental, you know, the office, office behavior. So if you take the green office behavior, and then your behavior is controlled by your boss, by your superior, by your peers. But here at the personal life, so normally you can engage in these behaviors voluntarily because you want to engage, You're not because of others. You are serious about greening, so you know the importance of greening. So therefore you continuously engage in green activities relating to a personal life. So they are usually entirely under your control. Okay, then now green work behavior. Right. Green uh, organization citizenship behavior. What is this? Is the extent to which the relevant employee engages in positive actions aimed at helping the organization, assisting the organization as a whole 
to achieve greening. You know, the organization has a green role to play. The organization specifically has four uh, green roles based on our four meanings of the term green. The organization has a preservation role. Preservationist as an organization. Then conservationist. Then non polluter And also the make of looking like natural place. So then we have to help the entire organization to achieve its uh, green related objective. For that, the political employee engages in certain positive actions. Certain positive actions. So these positive actions are indeed voluntary. Voluntary. They are not a part of formal job requirements. They are not a part of formal job requirements. Voluntary thing. They are not normally, in other words, they are not in the job description. They are voluntary things. You know? The employee does these voluntary things because the employee loves the organization. The employee loves the uh, greening. <coughs> right. <clears throat> okay, then uh, <clears throat> let us do an activity. Okay, so uh, if you go to this activity, activity, yes, this one, activity three. Please try to do this activity three. A skill build following is an instrument developed uh, by myself to measure a type of green behavior. Uh, please indicate the extent to which you agree with each statement. So assume now you are an employee. So then now you can uh, fill this one. I have a habit of using natural water rather than refrigerated water for drinking. Okay, relating to, you know, when, when you are at office, then it is relating to uh, work behavior. Even this, uh, this can be applied to personal life also. Right. So as you, you know, uh, as far as <clears throat> this item is concerned, this is a positive item. So then uh, strongly agree. Assume your response is strongly agree. So that means as far as this item is concerned, your organizational citizenship, green organizational citizenship behavior is very high. Then second item, uh, second statement, I do not use both sides of the paper when uh, writing or printing or photocopying because the relevant cost is negligible and it is difficult to do. So you strongly agree, assume strongly agree. So that means your citizenship, organizational citizenship behavior is at very low level. Agree, low level, indifferent, moderate level, disagree, high level, strongly disagree. So assume your response is that. So that means the organization of citizenship behavior is very high. So that means you have to do this. You have to use both sides of the paper in order to be green. From each statement, you can learn something. There is an action that you can follow to be green, to increase your degree of greening. I use my own vehicle to come to work instead of walking or bus or train. 
strongly disagree. Organization citizenship behavior is very high. This is a negative statement. So therefore strongly disagree. But if you say strongly agree, so that means your organization citizenship behavior is at very low level. Because if you use uh, your own vehicle, that will increase the environmental pollution, your carbon uh, uh, footprint, your carbon impact on the nature gets increased if you use your own vehicle because vehicle needs fuel and other things. The, the vehicle has wastage, which is a polluter, you know, which will pollute the nature. Nature. So that's why, you know, that's why in a country like Sri Lanka, you know, the importance, you know, it's very important to have very good bus service, very good train service. Then the people, you know, uh, can, can <clears throat> use the bus service or train service. So that will contribute to the natural environment by reducing the carbon impact of transportation, by reducing the transportation. You know, the serious mess. Uh, right. <clears throat> so the, uh, but anyway, in many cases, you know, going uh, under Corona, you know, we can't follow this one. Under Corona situation, you are supposed to use your own vehicle. That is a, a safe thing you know, to, 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 <clears throat> to prevent the possibility of you know, becoming infected. Infected. But anyway, as far as uh, this concept that is organizational uh, citizenship behavior, green organization citizenship behavior is concept, the ideal uh, response is strongly disagree. Then item four, normally I do hibernating the computer when not working as shutting down and opening up troublesome, troublesome. So then uh, this, is, uh, <clears throat> this is a negative statement. This is a negative action that will reduce the organizational citizenship behavior. So therefore, the ideal uh, response is this, strongly disagree. Rather than doing hibernating, you stop the computer. That will reduce the consumption of electricity. Increasing the uh, green organizational citizenship behavior. And I use natural light as much as possible when working. Uh, this is a positive action that will increase green organizational citizenship behavior. Then the expected response, ideal Response is strongly agree. Then I have put plants in the working and living uh, cubicle. A positive action. Ideally, strongly agree. Whenever possible, I buy organic food for parties. Positive action increasing uh, green organization citizenship behavior. The ideal expect you know expected response is strongly agree. Then I have a serious habit, statement eight, of working with all the bulbs on, switching on all the bulbs available in the room or place as I need a high level of light. Uh, this is a negative action that will reduce the green organization and citizenship behavior. Therefore, the expected ideal response is this one, strongly disagree. And I don't do reusing many items such as jugs, envelopes, cans, bottles, bags, etc. At the office and at home also. You know? And as well because I think such use is not healthy. Maybe some people may have, you know, some people may have you know, reported so like this. But anyway, as far as reading is concerned, specifically Green organization citizenship behavior is concerned. The ideal response should be strongly disagree. Then I am not used to resort a relevant officer. Report, report. A relevant officer regarding damages 
possible harms, etc., to the environment whenever noticed, because it is troublesome, not my business. Or there are, there are appointed people being paid and responsible. You know? there, are, there are maybe such employees, you know, employees of this nature. They follow this action. They think, you know, it is expensive. There's, they have no time to you know, report these things. There are people who are responsible. You know. So, the, you know, such people's, uh, you know, duties of reporting these things. Avoiding you know, damages, minimizing damages and possible harms. Why not me? I have some other duties which have more priority. Some employees may think like that, may activate in that way. So therefore, this is a negative action. Reducing the degree of green organizational citizenship behavior. Therefore, the ideal res response is strongly disagree. So sorry. See this one, strongly disagree. Yes, strongly disagree. Then I make switch. I make sure that, you know, switching off the air conditioners is done before ending time of daily work. Before 30 or 15 minutes early. This is a positive action, increasing the degree of green organization citizenship behavior. So the ideal expected answer is strongly agree. Okay, then this one, I was used to sleep without using any bulb on, after switching off all the bulbs. Okay, think, you know, this is normally sleeping is relating to personal life. Uh, but even on, you know, uh, there can be official residencies. So I was used to sleep without using any bulb. So how about you? How about you? So if you engage in this action, that's a positive action. You know, increasing your contribution to green, reducing the consumption of electricity. Electricity. So if you reduce the use of electricity, that will save many trees. Degree of cutting trees or degree of using fuels, then extraction, fuel, you know, from the uh, from the uh, surface, from the sea. Right. Uh, okay. Then first question, what, what is the type, what is the specific type of green beam measured by the above instrument? Yes, I have already mentioned. So you followed that. So that is the green organization citizenship behavior. And after filling the instrument, determine your own level of the relevant green behavior by giving points from one to five appropriate. So therefore, for negative things, for strongly agree, for negative things, uh, for strongly agree, you have to give one. For example, I was used to write. <clears throat> okay. So this one, strongly agree, you have to give <clears throat> five here. Four. Three, scoring, two, one. <clears throat> okay, so likewise do it, and then for interpretation, you can use this one. Then give a comment on how this important construct has been measured. Of course, these, you know, the, <clears throat> so many voluntary actions, you know, have been covered by this, uh, 12 items. There are 12 items. There are 12 items. You can you can improve the list, no problem. You can improve the list to improve this uh, green behavior, which is green organization citizenship behavior. You can add new items. Right. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> shall we do this one also? Interpersonal, so this is about, you know, measuring. So what is the specific type of green behavior measured by? 
the above instrument, uh, that is interpersonal citizenship behavior. Green interpersonal uh, citizenship behavior. So what is that? Green interpersonal citizenship behavior. Again, I have to go to this one. The <clears throat> so if you draw, you know. Can you see me now? Okay, let us let, let, let us be with that. You know, let us be with that. Uh, <clears throat> technical, you know, changing things, uh, you know, changing one thing to another thing through the Zoom will reduce our efficiency. You know. So we want to save our time, which is very limited. Right, okay, let me do this one. The, 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 this is skill builder, which is about, you know, the green interpersonal citizenship behavior. What is green interpersonal citizenship behavior? That is the extent to which the particular employee engages in positive actions, engages in positive actions, uh, which will help other people, especially peers, to become, you know, green. To become green. So if you if you assume uh, you are the relevant employee, so then uh, you know, let me ask this question: Do you help others, your peers, to be green? If you do that, uh, you are exhibiting green interpersonal citizenship behavior. Let me ask another question: Do you teach about greening to others? Do you answer questions about greening asked by other people? If you do such things, communicating relevant information, helping others to be green, teaching others to become green, uh, then answering questions, uh, solving problems related to greening, uh, then you exhibit a high level of green interpersonal citizenship behavior. If you don't engage in such things, then you don't have that behavior. If you have, that is at low level. Okay, then let us further, you know, to, to make you understand further, let us deal with each statement. I don't stimulate others to become green because others should change so by themselves. So I don't stimulate others. That means you don't develop the enthusiasm within others to become green. I strongly disagree. That's the ideal response. This is a negative action that will reduce your interpersonal, green interpersonal citizenship behavior. So therefore, strongly disagree. Then I answer question statement two. I answer questions asked by others about Greening positive, uh, this is a positive action. Expecting the ideal response as strongly agree. I have a habit of teaching others about how to become green. The expected ideal answer is strongly agree. To increase the green interpersonal relationship behavior. Then spending my time and effort, item four, to influence others to become green is not done because I am not rewarded by anyone for doing this. There may be an employee of, you know, engaging in this action because that employee is not being paid about helping others to be green, advising others to be green. Then you know, this is a negative action that will reduce that employee's green interpersonal citizenship behavior. So therefore, strongly disagree. That's the ideal response. Then I have performed uh, some green works which were supposed to be performed by others. Strongly agree. Positive action. Increasing the green interpersonal citizenship behavior. 
then item uh, six. Whenever possible, I discuss the importance of dealing with others. Strongly agree. That's the ideal response because this is a positive action, increasing the degree of green interpersonal citizenship behavior. Item seven. I have personally appreciated green works done by others. Strongly agree because this is a positive statement. Item eight. I don't finger into green works which others have to do or which others have not done. Strongly disagree because this is a positive, not a positive action. This is a negative action. Reducing the degree of green interpersonal citizenship behavior. Then item nine. I have personally criticized non-performance of green works by others. Strongly agree. That's the ideal response because this is a positive action. I try to be an excellent example to others on greedy. Strongly agree because that's the expected response because this is a positive action. Okay, so then you can do scoring for negative actions. You know, uh, strongly agree five. Then. Strongly disagree, five. Strongly agree, one. Three. Two. Four. Then this is a positive action, so then it's strongly disagree, one. Disagree, two. Indifferent, three. Agree, four. Strongly agree, five. So this is the way of uh, scoring. So then you can get the total. Then you can interpret by using this procedure. So if your uh, points are between 43 and 50, congratulations. So your interpersonal, green interpersonal citizenship behavior is very high. Ideally, that is what we expect from each employee under green human resource management. Green human resource management is there to, 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 to improve the degree of green organizational citizenship behavior as well as this behavior, that is green interpersonal citizenship behavior. Okay, uh, give a comment on how this important construct has been measured. So many items are there. So the, there are uh, 10 items which will really uh, reflect the content of green interpersonal citizenship behavior, which is about positive actions, aiming at helping the organization. So in fact, aiming at helping and assisting other employees to be green so that the organizational boss of greening can be accomplished to the fullest extent. So these eight, eight, 10 items, are sufficient, but we can increase further. We can introduce new items that will enhance the content of this uh, instrument or the content validity. You know, there's something called content validity. Content validity I discussed when I was teaching about staffing subject, which is a specialized subject. And also hopefully under research method, you have learned something about Content validity of an instrument, which is used to measure a concept, a variable, which is a qualitative, more qualitative, abstract variable. Okay, then here now we have this one uh, critical incident, this one activity two. Right, before that, you know, let me finish again. I have to go to this, uh, what is this? PowerPoint presentation, right. You know, in the, <clears throat> right, in the PowerPoint presentation, I have, I have given, you know, many, 
many behaviors you know many actions as a preservationist as a conservationist as a non polluter and as a maker so you can see you know so then please use them please study so my power my powerpoint presentation is rich so in this way then as a conservationist you know four hours here you can see uh, you know uh, <clears throat> two authors professor once and professor dilcha in 2012 they introduce one concept called the four hours so the first r stand for re reduce second r stand for reuse third r stands for repurpose and the fourth r stands for recycle so that will reducing reusing repurposing and recycling four r's interesting reducing reducing the use so for example you reduce the uh, use of uh, refrigerated water for drinking purpose reducing that means increase your degree of green especially under the second meaning conservation of the natural environment then reusing reusing assume you purchase a bottle of uh, water bottle of water you finish you finish that water and then uh, you use it again and you you go to the well and then you know draw a bucket of water and then uh, uh, fill that bottle you know by using that water coming from the whatever yes that water from the from the what is it from the bucket that's reusing then you you know reuse the bottle for many days for several weeks you use that reuse it then repurpose what is repurpose an example of uh, repurposing okay assume i got a document from from the dean of the faculty that has 10 pages that has 10 pages but uh but uh, the, uh, the the other side of each page is empty is empty and uh, then i want to i want to print out an article i want to take a print out of an article then by using those empty you know sites assume i am going to get that print out uh, that is repurpose an example of repurposing assume i got an envelope you know with the address my address with the my address then you know uh, i use the same envelope i delete my address and then put the new address affix the new address and then i send it to another person without using a new envelope that is repurposing we can say uh, that is okay oh, that no, that is an example of reusing isn't it that is good for reusing but repurposing another example okay i'll uh, take okay <clears throat> assume your father you know purchase a uh, 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 scan you know uh, tin tin uh, you, you purchase you know a uh, tin of what is this uh, paint paint as your father you know wants to do some repair relating to your home so therefore pa father wanted you know wanted to buy 4 liters of a certain color you know color 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 paint color paint and then the father did use it that one and then clean the bucket bucket is a very large one at uh, that bucket the father decided to use to store rice certain dried things you know rice uh, you know decided to use uh, put rice onto that bucket for you know for four liters uh, that is an example of uh, repurpose okay then recycling you can understand recycle okay so these are the examples i <clears> have <throat> 
okay uh, reducing use then we have here the reusing many examples right the repurposing so if you have any questions you can raise so i have given many examples yes i have written so at least you can refer to them you can refer to uh, this powerpoint presentation and then study and also hopefully the video right as a non polluter the employee can take actions put plants in the working cubicle to absorb pollution buy organic food for parties report to a relevant officer regarding damages possible harms you know this was an item in that our exercise measuring uh green interpersonal citizenship be treat as far as waste in the due way so likewise you know minimize the plastic use okay then as a maker intentionally build a park we now you can't do you know because you are not an earner you don't have money so maybe your parents have but this is very uh, difficult for you but anyway one day hopefully in future uh you can develop a park build a park or you can contribute to uh <clears throat> to develop a park right can they be to last one create a new small forest around work facilities but don't don't you know i mean new small forest not not a very large forest you know where there may be dangerous animals also they may come to uh, factory facilities and then destroy various things but not 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 a such, a such a thing but you know small forest so we can see you know that can invite certain birds certain small features which are needed to maintain the ecological balance of the uh, of the planet in a situation where there are so many buildings concrete buildings right <clears throat> okay then uh green official behavior now yes that i did not discuss yes. green official behavior that's the third dimension of green behavior so that's the extent to which the employee engages in official duties assigned by the superior with regard to green with regard official duties maybe related to environmental programs you know official duties not like the you know uh, green behaviors like gocp green organization citizenship bha gicb the abbreviation stands for a uh, green interpersonal citizenship bha this is not voluntary this is official this is compulsory this is mandatory you know because the employee expects the relevant you know from the relevant employee to engage in certain officially assigned environmental duties so like you know uh, reduce waste take maybe the real rules you know policies you know following specific policies procedures and rules relating to reducing waste take relate relating to removing waste relating to reducing environmental pollution so like you know waste you know normally some companies they have certain dust bins you know with different colors different colors maybe yellow uh then green then uh white so like you know different by using different colors okay so then uh, sp specified officially determined uh procedures are there relating to uh environmental sustainability all these procedures will have to be followed by the respective employees they come under a uh, green uh work behavior okay uh, then uh, <clears throat> there are another two things you know green uh, green resource 
You know, on the green resource, there are two things. Green innovations and green outcomes. So normally, now you have learned a green attitude. Then you have learned a green behavior. So a green attitude will lead to hopefully green behavior, which will lead to green resource. You must have learned about a general theory called uh, system theory. System theory. Green attitude can be considered as an input. Then green behavior can be considered as a behavior. Then green resource can be considered as an output. So from the system theory. So if there are no moderators, assume, you know, which usually disturb the, the, the theory. What is the theory? Attitude, the right attitude, right green attitude will lead to right green behavior, which will lead to right green resource. So what are the green resource? Green resource have been defined here as the extent to which the relevant employee has produced green outcomes. Green out outcome. So here the basically two things. Green innovations, that's one thing under green, you know, uh, under green uh, resource, green innovation. So what do you mean by green innovations? They are the products which promote environmental sustainability. And they come as a resource of green, related new ideas. Maybe these innovations may be done by normal employees, even done by human resource manager, or you know, specialized, more technical, green-related innovations usually can be done by the relevant experts in the field, engineers in the field. New environment issues like, you know, the new solutions for waste reduction, new solutions for reduction of polluting water, air, land. Still, Sri Lanka is badly needing these green innovations. Of course, you know, as you know, on your part, you are going to be, uh, so assume you will one day, you will become a human resource manager. Or a professional in human resource management. <clears throat> then if you decide to introduce various programs for increasing green citizenship behavior, increasing green interpersonal citizenship behavior, increasing green attitude, Transforming, you know, various normal HR functions into green, greening. Uh, then, you know, you will have to engage in green, new, innovative things. You will have to perform green innovations. Policy-wise, scheme-wise, we can innovate. Right. In, in fact, you know, uh, as a professor, I have innovated certain uh, green HR and concepts like now you have just learned. So you know, innovative concepts, new things. You know, adding adding to the existing body of knowledge. Right then, green outputs are kind of resources which are concerned with feeding and enhancing green. Examples, number of hours of working with natural light or minimum number of electricity bulbs. Green output, we can consider that. One, one behavior, okay, green attitude. So if you take green attitude, assume you believe, you believe that, uh, <clears throat> you believe that reduced number of hours of working with, uh, with uh, not, not reduced number, Increased number of hours of working with natural light will have a significant contributions to the green. Assume you believe that, you feel it interesting, then you have a serious intention to be with reducing the number of hours of working, not reducing, I'm sorry, increasing the number of hours of working with natural light. That is your right behavior as far as this output is concerned. Your right attitude, not right behavior. 
your right attitude okay believing feeling positively and then uh, serious intention to be with and then assume you engaging with the right attitude you engage in the right behavior so that means you engage in you know working with the natural light by using many many hours many many hours and then your behavior will result in increased number of hours working with natural light assume last month you engaged in that behavior and then the number of hours of working with natural light was assume uh eight hours only eight hours and this month you know you increase further uh then the the, the this uh, you know this month number is assume 20 uh, there's a significant increase relating to the number of hours of working with natural light the minimum number of electricity bulbs right the amount of reduction of electricity consumption amount of reduction of water consumption for production and organization of work these you know examples we can measure quantitatively we can measure quantitatively amount of reduction of existing level of inputs wasting right. these are considered you know as uh, green outputs <clears throat> right further examples Right. There can be many examples you know, under the four laws of greening. Preservation is conservation is non-polluter and maker. If you really engage in greening, if you really you know work in an organization where green HRM is being seriously practiced. <clears throat> right. So then uh, so we discuss about two dimensions of green research green innovations and green outputs that if you take both you know green innovations and green outputs and also yes they you know uh, they will uh, they will lead to creation of another concept employee green performance of job employee green performance of job so that is the extent to which a particular employee has engaged in behaviors, actions, and activities, and produce results in respect of greening during a particular period of time. Of course, we have to consider a certain period of time, you know, especially for the purpose of measuring. So we we are supposed to measure the degree of employee green performance of job, because without measuring, we can't achieve the success. We can't increase the degree of success. So everything needs to be measured. Nowadays, several times we have learned the importance of measuring. Measuring things in a chart. Right. So the, uh, so let me show you one figure. Okay, here, figure-wise, it is easy to understand. You can see here, you know, you can see here, employee green inputs. Then here, employee green performance of job. Here we have green organization of performance. Here we have CSR, green uh, citizen, yes, yeah, citizen, okay, corporate citizenship, we saw some CSR. So, sorry, uh, corporate uh, social responsibility, right? That's a popular abbreviation, and so I uh, made a mistake, right? Maybe because of tiredness here. Yeah. Are you a. Uh, okay, you are not seeing. Okay, now, now I think you can see. You can see. Uh, this figure, you know, we have here the employee green inputs. Then here we have employee green performance of job, and then green organization of performance. 
so green competencies here we have within the green attitude under employee green inputs so if you read you know this one so what i call is this you know for this there are four things green hr requirements don't worry you know if you read this article you know it is easy to read this article english is clear english is distinct english is easily understandable so therefore please be serious and refer to this one and engage in serious reading then you will be able to get that right understand about these things green competencies green attitude green behavior and green research so we discuss you know these three things under green behavior also we discuss you know this cognitive affective behavioral aspects you know, under green attitude then green competencies simply the knowledge of green skills of green then green visas which were also discuss so green innovations and green outcome so this you know so green competencies and green attitudes we can consider as employee green inputs by using various hr functions we can develop employ green inputs for example selection by using right green selection we can make sure that we have right employees in terms of green then we by using training by using induction we will be able to improve green competency green attitude then here the you know the inputs you know will lead to a uh, behavior green employee green performance of job so that's green behavior and green research these two things are considered you know were considered and then uh, i give this label employee green performance of job employee green performance of job and then this you know employee green performance of job that is basically at the individual level which will lead to green organizational performance if each employee Thus, is so her part or the share under green behavior and under green resource. Then, of course, there will be a summation of those individual things uh, that is labeled as green organizational performance, which will definitely lead to uh, corporate social responsibility. instead of uh, corporate social responsibility you know we can introduce here another term uh, corporate environmental sustainability that is a bit better word instead of uh, corporate social responsibility but at the time of writing this article i used that one the term uh, which was a very popular term corporate social responsibility Okay, now time is uh, seven eight. Without taking a break, you engage in listening to me. I engage in teaching. Uh, shall we have a break? Shall we have a break, dear students? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. We will have a break for uh, five minutes.
Okay, uh, let us uh, resume uh, activity one. <clears throat> so study the following figure. What can you understand? Write your understanding. So you can see uh, four boxes, advocate, builder, leader, and practitioner. Advocate, builder, leader, and practitioner. Then here you can see uh, roles of uh, human resource manager. Roles of human resource manager as a greening maven. As a greening maven. So what is this greening maven? Maven is an expert, you know, a veteran. Uh, an expert, the greening maven, the roles of human resource manager as a greening maven. <clears throat> so if there is something called green HRA, then this has to be performed mainly by the so-called human resource manager within the organization. So then this human resource manager has, according to this uh, figure, this uh, the human resource manager has to play four roles as a greening maven. One is advocate. So what is the meaning of green advocate? To develop a positive attitude within especially top managers and middle managers about greening and creating a greening culture. Greening and creating a greening culture. Positive attitude, you know. Positive attitude within top managers. So, of course, you know, we have to understand that under Green HRM, we have to uh, start new Green HR programs. No. Uh, green HR programs uh, under preservation, conservation, non pollution, and all this. So, then, you know, they, they, they take money, they will take effort. You know, it, is, it, is, it is not free. It is not free. It is to a certain extent, you know. Uh, financial, so we have to we have to <clears throat> use certain money to be green. To start with uh, uh, greening HR greening programs, greening program. So then, for that, top managers, you know, there may be managers they don't they are reluctant because it involves money. They may consider greening is an additional thing. It is not needed to be done at the organization level. It is something needed to be done by the certain environmental authorities, which belongs to the government. Certain government officers, certain government organizations have to deal with the preservation of the environment, conservation of the environment, avoidance or minimization of the environmental pollution. Developing gardens, parks, and those things. You know, traditional top managers who can't understand the importance of greening can think like that. Then there is, you know, on the part of the human resource manager, there's a serious need of developing a positive attitude. Because now the top managers have a negative attitude about greening. That negative attitude has to be eradicated has to be replaced by a positive attitude. For that, the human resource manager has to work individually. Individually. Maybe the human resource manager can show so, you know, certain results, actual results, which are very positive. Actual results you know, of certain organizations, 
which seriously engage in green HR and then achieve uh, green visas, green innovations, green, which are considerable, considerable. Business-wise, you, you, you can see, we learned earlier at the, you know, uh, there is a business case for greening and green HR. There's a moral case for greening and green HR. There are many, you know, there, there are many natural disasters like tsunami, acid rain, so many natural disasters. We will never be able to, you know, envisage some other different disaster which the current world has not experienced. We have not experienced. Who knows? The corona is a result of non greening is a result of non greening or greening, non-greening has something to do with corona. Who knows? We don't have yet, uh, you know, uh, research studies. But uh, we can suspect. You know? Right. Uh, then uh, the, the role of builder to prepare a code of greening to train uh, all employees and make structural additions. You know, uh, here, you know, as an advocate, so assume you are the human resource manager. Then by using various things, you were able to develop a positive attitude between uh, especially top managers and middle managers about greening and creating a green HR culture. Assume you could do that. And now then, uh, you, know, you got the permission, you got the relevant support, you got the relevant facilities, and now you have to prepare a code of greening then to train all the relevant employees and make structural additions, maybe a separate HR executive for greening, separate HR executive for greening, a separate team called green team or greening team. So likewise, the structural additions. And these things come under the role of building. Then as a leader, to reward greening behavior, to punish anti-greening behavior, and allow whistle blowing relating to greening, non you know pollutions and other bad actions, bad you know behaviors of the manager. And then as a practitioner, so the role of practitioner, as a practitioner, the human resource manager is supposed to be a role model by being green first. So that means you know, for example, I am a teacher of greening now. So I am trying to make you green as a student. So before making you green, first I must, I, I, you know, I should become myself a green employee, green person. Then only I can give an example to you to follow. So likewise, in an organization, the human resource manager must become a green person must engage in greening by giving an example to others to follow. Okay, right. Then uh, shall we go to then activity two, which is about a critical incident. So we will uh, read that a senior academic has to travel for about 13 kilometers to his usual place of working usual place of working a leading university in a country on the way uh, frequently he notices uh, notice boards of various sizes with different shaped letters some are handwritten and others are printed. Communicating what? Don't put garbage. Don't put garbage. Then putting uh, trash here only for dogs. Again, in family in Singhal. May those uh, put uh, rubbish here get demerit. 
demerit. Another one. May those who put rubbish here get demerit. In single, may he kunudana ayata hinagapa. How is it the way? It's a very bad statement, no? I have, you know, so in, I have even, I have personal experience. Then curse those who put trash here. Sapa Veva. May Kuruda and Ida Sapa Veva. Another notice. Then families of those who put rubbish get a striking of life. Uh, this is the uh, Inagana Karandari Vitanavati. Yes, this is. This one may those who put rubbish uh, here get demerit. Uh, this singular translation may he kunudaman ayat pausid the veva. Pin nola veva, demerit, pau. And so on. For many days it happens to him. Noticing many bags of filthy things scattered over the edges of the roads and dogs and cows finding things to eat. The academic never, the academic never did such a thing, and what whenever possible, he motivated others not to do putting rubbish at undue and non-permitted places. He came to know about a fact from many associates that. Majority of people who were used to put dirty things at places are people who come in their own vehicles, including elegant and luxurious motor cars. Recently, when he was going in a jeep with jeep, the driver of which, who is one of his former students and an academic, told him of an event where one seemingly rich person got noticed by a group of villagers putting a large bag of dirty things with the help of two police constables. It was possible to confront the person who replied, this is my first day of putting trash. Please let me go. Finally, after a verbal clash, the villagers allowed the person to go, but they did throwing much of the piled rubbish including his bag of rubbish into the elegant car. So this critical incident is an actual critical incident. Okay, so the, <clears throat> I think this is not a new thing to you. So then what can you learn from this incident? What solutions uh, do you propose? If I allow you to, you know, uh, <clears throat> yes, respond. Can anyone respond? Yes, time is going, yes, please. One can unmute and make a certain response. Don't worry. If you are going to be wrong, don't worry. I don't think so. You are going to be wrong. You can add something useful. Yes, are you all right? So if you respond, then you know the <clears throat> yes. Okay, maybe <clears throat> right. So what solutions uh, do you propose? So what can you learn from this incident? There are many things. There are many things. Of course, uh, these are, you know, this, uh, this uh, clearly indicates that there are people who are you know, 
who have wrong attitude about green, who can't understand the importance of green. So there are people who do not support. They are against uh, greening. Maybe they are not really against greening, but they don't understand the importance of greening. They don't care about that. They don't know their survival depends on the survival of the nature. They are not understanding that the nature, bad nature, will give bad rewards, bad, not rewards, bad resource damages to the people. People do bad things, then in return, they will have to get bad things from the nature. So there can be many solutions. So then I have mentioned various things under human resource management. So why not, you know, if every organization uh, applies green human resource management to a significant extent, then we will be able to reduce the number of critical incidents of this nature. Perhaps one day, the number will be zero. So from a charity, we can make a significant contribution. The government can do that. The other, uh, other, you know, outsiders, they can do that. The relevant authorities, they can do that. But I believe that <clears throat> HRM is perhaps the best strategy, best intervention, let me say. Green HRM is the best intervention to increase the degree of greening within employees first and then uh, general paper. Because, uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, right, so we learned many things, you know, we learned green attitude, we learned uh, green uh, personal behavior, then green official behavior, sorry, not green official behavior, green work behavior, then under green work behavior, we learned uh, three sub concepts green organizational citizenship behavior, green interpersonal citizenship behavior, and green official behavior. Also, we learn green resource. Then we learn uh, green uh, performance of the job. Then we learn green organizational performance. These are the new concepts that we learn today. In addition to greening and green HRM, yes. Greening and green HRM. Okay, then uh, any questions? In fact, I have some videos, you know, uh, interesting videos, but uh, this online teaching doesn't facilitate the use of such things. Also now the time is 7.30. Yes, uh, uh, anyone? So the, I think this is enough. As far as today's session is concerned, yes. Any questions? One student can unmute and then respond. No questions, sir. Are you genuine? Yes. Okay, right. Uh, then, uh, if you don't have any questions, then, okay, then, uh, good night. Good night, sir.